Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. <sighs> you know, I don't like getting emotional like this. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're well. As you can tell from the title, today we're discussing Atlanta season four, episode seven, Snipe Hunt. This episode was everything, a bona fide five out of five. Last week's episode is still my favorite for the season so far, but this is a very close number two. It was unexpected, it was eerie, and it also gave me the feels. It was very, guys, let me know if I was the only one, but I was watching this episode, dun 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 dun, anxiety on level high, and that lets you know. As per usual, what does Atlanta like to do? Put a mirror up to you and let you know that how you perceive things your perspective sometimes needs to be shifted. I watched this show thinking it was gonna give a horror or supernatural vibe. I mean, after all, black people in the woods, where they do that at? Not only that, based on what we've seen, whether it be this show or other shows, when things are going well, they go way left, right? And I think for me, this gave me a moment of pause to appreciate the moment. That is one of the biggest themes from this episode. I'll keep it real with you. When I first watched this, I was like, yo, this is boring, especially compared to last week's antics. That's why that week is my favorite. But I love this for different reasons. I think one of my subbies put it best. Atlanta is a perfect pairing of real and surreal. There's so much reality, even when things are popping off and going crazy, but it reminds you that life is crazy. And sometimes what we don't expect to be real or from the culture, when we get our Googles on, it actually happened or actually is. And this episode is no different. The episode opens up with Sade and I'm feeling the vibe. One thing I've always loved about Sade is that her music is so calming and grounding, which is very parallel to the energy that Van has in this episode. And now that I think about it, with the exception of protecting her daughter, or when she got her badass self off in Paris, she's always been grounded and relatable and reasonable. So listening to Sade, I was thinking, who put this track on? It is Your Love is King, but it started to allow the awkwardness to settle in. We don't hear any words. As it's panning in, we see the shots of the woods and we see these two parents in a car. I'm wondering what's the status because it's giving co-parent right now. And when Van says slow down, I read that two ways. Slow down because you're driving too fast and we might miss where we're going, but slow down because what's the rush? And that's one of the biggest themes of this episode. Of course, once they meet the guy who I guess keeps the grounds, he has the same energy. Just slow down. There's kids, there's dogs, there's deers. He was so cheerful. I hate to say this guys, but this shows you how jaded I am. I instantly read this as, yo, he's gonna jiggy them up. At some point in the night, he's gonna snatch up Lottie or hold these people hostage. Something's gonna pop off. I don't do horror movies, but all I do know is black people in the forest is not a good thing, okay? And him being too nice, again, this shows you, the shows I've watched have really changed my perspective, but also the experiences I've had in my life. <laughs> I thought something was gonna go down the entire episode and I think that's why my anxiety was level high because I'm like, it's too good to be true. And that's really sad to say. Atlanta has this magical way of holding a mirror up to ourselves. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, where we see something one way, but it puts it on its axis. Why do I or you watch an episode like this and have this undercurrent and this feeling lingering there of discomfort, unease, unrest, anxiety? Is it because of what we watch? Is it because of what we experience? Is it because of what this show has shown us before? Whichever way it goes, we didn't need to have that kind of energy. And if you watch it again, you watch it with new eyes, even though you've already seen it. You're not watching it feeling like, who's in the woods or what's this guy's vibe? You watch it as, this is a family going on a vacation. I wish I could have had that sentiment on first watch, but I think that's why episodes and shows like this in general have such a good place in the culture. Even when they're unpacking the car, there's still this feeling of awkwardness as the three of them are walking towards the campsite and Lottie's walking a little bit ahead. The conversation is just, it's meh. This episode was boring until it wasn't, but we'll get to it. They start to set up the tent and I'm laughing because Ern decides to do the most and get a 12 person tent and Van just cool, calm, collected as per usual, lets him know, hey, actually we're gonna be freezing because body heat is what 
Never mind. Let me just set it up for you. It's clear that she knows what she's doing. I feel like Van has always been the one that's grounded and in control and reasonable and earns kind of like, let's just go out and do all the things, the big risk taker and their personalities and how they are paralleled and dissonant really shows throughout this entire episode. It's almost as if they showed us these characters over four seasons in one episode. That's how I felt about it. So there's one point where they asked Lottie to help. She's like, nope, I thought she was gonna pull out her iPad real quick. Cause when she was in the car, she was not having saying hi to that guy. She just looked at him like, yo, Lottie had a lot of attitude in this episode. She told her dad, oh, you can sleep outside. He's like, okay, I'll get my toothbrush. I feel bad for him, but I said, you know, kids are very intuitive. So something must've happened. And that's why she keeps responding or not responding to him the way that she did. Instead, she goes towards the water, leans in and looks with the curiosity only a child has. And I'm like, girl, don't do that. Don't do that. Cause you look and someone looks back at you. I'm not here for that. Again, I don't do horror. Luckily there's nothing, just beautiful nature, peace and serenity. It's so serene. They sent a, <laughs> they sent, <laughs> I didn't laugh that much during this episode, but I did when they set up the tent because I said, what is that? You're gonna sleep in that, it's gonna collapse on you in the night. I don't know if they actually slept or if it was the same day, but either way, it's Lottie's birthday. They go on a walk, they get to this river and here comes the personalities and the differences. Ern wants to take his whole child and cross the rapids and Van has to again be the voice of reason and no, slow down, don't rush. Again, that same sentiment of slowing down enjoying the process. It is the becoming and not the journey, or actually it is the journey. It is the becoming and not the getting to the goal or the destination that matters. It's the journey and being able to spend time. And we see Van give looks that I can't really discern. It wasn't the same eyes that she gave him when he said all those things to the three ladies about, you know, Van is better than me. She's a good mother, she's intelligent, she's all that. That look was not the same as this one. It was almost like a catching yourself from falling again, if you know what I mean. Or maybe, you know, I am legally blind, so I try to read into things since I can't read regularly anymore. When Ern is trying to get his dad jokes off and Lottie's like, no, that's not how it works. And he's like, well, it's opposite. I instantly thought about how this is an opposite to the Helen episode where Van was longing for something that Ern couldn't give her. And without saying too much about my business, when that episode dropped, I was in a similar situation and I was triggered, okay? It really hurts in a different kind of way when you watch an actress as immaculate as Zazie Beetz demonstrate what it feels like to want to be with someone who doesn't want to be enough for themselves to be with you. And we see that Ern's been going to therapy and although he hasn't been applying it because he's still spiteful, he's putting into practice some of the things. That's why he brought up Atlanta to LA and she kind of shut him down while building the tent. I thought that was interesting because I always figured Van would be direct and just say no. So when she's like, let's talk about it later. I said, what's a better time than now? You're out in the woods, you're unplugged, undistracted, but okay, she must have a reason, right? They get to the picnic site and as per usual, what Atlanta does so well is they pair culture, history, and real life into their fictitious story. They're at Sweetwater Creek, or is it Sweetwood Creek? Whichever way it is, that is part of the campgrounds they're at and that structure is actually the ruins of a cotton mill. So as you guys know, back in the day, slavery was a thing and it was big in Georgia, okay? And when I did my Googles, I realized that that mill was a very prominent part of Georgia's financial success. I'm pretty sure that when slavery was ended, they pretended like they didn't get the memo and were still doing what they were doing. But there's something to be said about having this black family enjoy nature around a place where our bodies were commodified and where maybe we weren't able to honor one another in this way. And I could go on for days about the structure of families and black men in the household and how they intentionally divided and that's why it's still present in today, but we're not gonna get into that, okay? What we are gonna get into is when Lottie was going through and playing around the ruins, bobbing and weaving, I thought she gonna get snatched up real quick or she's gonna go through a portal. I don't know why my brain goes so far over the ledge, but I had all types of anxiety, like you need to make sure your picnic don't go too far. Once my nerves settled, to me that moment signified the innocence of a child playing around a moment in time that had a lot of strife, but was what it was. And it made the 
life they have today possible if it wasn't for the people of the past our descendants we couldn't be who we are today and just like Ern and al walking away from aunt genie that decision to use your past to inform your presence you can have a promising tomorrow and lottie is the embodiment of their tomorrow after all people always say your child is your legacy right so her childlike curiosity and playfulness and picking up that toad it all comes into play of seeing what Lottie's significance and almost symbolism to what Van and Ern created is, and they talk about it later in the episode. I love that again, Van is super calm and she tells her, oh, put it down, we'll go snipe hunting later. And Ern's like, snipe, and I thought same thing too, like that sounds a little racist if you ask me. And Van reveals that she used to be a Girl Scout, and I'm thinking, how did Ern not know that? Then I also thought, you can know someone for a long time, and I'm gonna assume that maybe they dated for a year before Lottie came in the picture. Either way, it's always in the moments where you slow down and you tap in that you really get to know about your significant other. It shows you that you could be married for years, and if you take the time to, you get to know something different about your partner every single day. And I thought it was beautiful that she just casually shared, yeah, snipe hunt, it's this thing, and da 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 and I'm like, mm, doesn't sound like, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know about no catching no snipe, but okay. I Googled what a snipe was too, and it's a bird. I just don't think that kind of bird is gonna be on the ground at the type of night. And other things a kid might catch, I don't know if that's all right. But I Googled a video of it, and the kids were so excited, and it was so adorable, but I still don't, I don't think I would send my child if I had one to go catch no snipe. Just me though. <laughs> Especially not after seeing this. Might again be reaching. I also read Lottie picking up the frog as being able to appreciate nature without forcing it. There's a way to enjoy what's around you in the essence and be immersed in it without grabbing it by the neck, right? And a lot of times we force love, we force friendship, we force opportunities, we force experiences, when we should just let it evolve and happen naturally around us. Even every time Ern brought up LA, it felt forced because it didn't feel like it was the right timing. Like, like Van said later on in the episode, it felt like he was manipulating them by renting out the whole campgrounds. And I just, I don't know, something about it just didn't seem right. If you know what it is, put it down below. <laughs> I'm already laughing thinking about what happened because this was the funniest moment. Erin brings up LA yet again and Van's like, okay, you know what, Lottie, we're gonna go snipe hunting. She explains the whole thing, the marshmallow in the corner of the bag, the lamp, you get hit it on the head. I said, what happened to treating nature nicely? But okay, go off. They leave her to her own devices, a little too far off if you ask me, but I can't see well, so maybe that's not too far, let me know. I just feel like she was too far away from the parents. Then they start talking about the conversation. I loved that Van had pushed back for Ern. When Ern first asked, what's so great about Atlanta that you wanna stay? She didn't answer for four or five seconds, and I love that awkward silence because it gave us as the viewers a chance to reminisce on what we've seen in the show, but also for ourselves. What do we know about Alana or even thinking about our own lives? What would help us stay or go in anything, whether it's leaving for me from Toronto to somewhere else or a state in my life to another stage? What are the pros and the cons? And it didn't even seem like she was thinking of that in the three or four second, seconds because <laughs> she actually threw it back on him. And I like that. He needs that, especially for what we've seen over the last couple of years. It doesn't seem like she's the same Van and Helen that is worried about only being seen as Lottie's mom. Boy, was I wrong. So as we get into this conversation, of course, Lottie's like, I caught it. They look at each other like, caught what? They go over, you hear some snarling and growling. I said... What in the demonic ish is this? I'm not here for this return to sender. I love when Van says, you're gonna run to me in one, two, three. <laughs> They're both like, what is it? <laughs> I didn't see it. If you saw it, what did it look like? Cause that did not sound like no bird. That sounded like a reptile, amphibian, I don't know what. Then it's time to cool down and sing happy birthday. Lottie puts up her one hand. I'm looking at the candle, I zoomed in, I said six? No way, she's not five turning six. This girl's five turning 15. I was way wrong and way off a couple weeks ago when I said she's probably eight to 12, because she acts so mature and grown. Only children are like that though, I've noticed. So when she put her hand up, I said, yo, this girl, one of a kind, one of a kind. I thought all kids like to be sung to, but I was wrong. Then at night you hear, Ern's teeth? 
<laughs> that moment killed me. So Van invites him over to their spot, asks Lottie if she wants some more. What are you doing? Just making sure she's asleep. And then he starts to ask again, incessantly about LA and Van is more direct and kind of savage. You know, I don't want to go. I don't want to go as Lottie's mom. I don't want to go as your security blanket. I don't want to go. Every reason she gave, I was here for. And I want to see this family unit together, but I don't want it to be for the wrong reasons. And I think I learned that from the Helen episode to now that she needs that for her mental health, for the sake of being a good parent to Lottie and because she deserves better. And what I didn't expect was for Earn to step out of who he used to be and become so vulnerable, even saying, I've never done this before, sitting up with the lighting on his face, just everything about this episode was perfection he professes his love but not before that does he say well you know i'm a good looking guy nothing's tethering me i won't have a hard time why do guys do that i need to know because it never it always turns me off when someone starts like that you don't think i already know it's not about bringing the table we're both the table so you ain't gotta tell me what you have you don't gotta tell me where you can go if you need to you should go so I was already turned off when he started like that, but when he started talking about he wants to be with her, not because Lottie's her daughter, it's because she is her. And that really did everything that Van needed. And that's why she started to cry. And I'm like, don't cry, don't cry. It's not that kind of show, we're not gonna cry. It was such a beautiful moment. Damn, the writers could definitely do a romantic comedy after this if they wanted to, because I did not expect this. It was raw, it was real, it was grounding, it was authentic, it wasn't over the top. Although Van did throw in that slight, she did throw some shade and say, you know, you're giving Kanye passionate, which perfect timing, yet again, yet again. Because if you know what Kanye was up to on Drink Champs last week, nah, I don't wanna get canceled, so let me not say nothing. He was giving Kanye passionate and it is, crazy to be in love there is that intoxicating infectious feeling when you're in love and you can't even hold it and he did such a good job of sharing that in his voice the way it changed the intonation and the lighting and the facial expressions in the conveying of how he desires her and he's had that feeling since Amsterdam I think he's had that feeling from before Amsterdam but her leaving him in the dust that did it for him. And sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need to give someone the space. Just like I said, it's symbolic of letting things happen naturally and letting it take its course instead of forcing it. This happened way more organically. He came to this idea on his own, whether with the assistance of Tillman, his therapist, or realizations over time. It's earned professing his love, not because he's been told to, he has no other choice to, but because yes, he's a little manipulative and he wants her to go to LA, but he also wants her to know no matter what happens, this is how he feels. And it's enough for her, she says yes. I mean, who's to say we won't change in the next, what, two, three episodes, but at this point, we all have the feels. And I laugh because the next scene we see is Lottie's feet and them all moved out. As soon as they said, oh yeah, there must have been a lean. There was definitely a lean, you definitely slid. <laughs> It's morning and the energy is completely shifted. It's lovely dovey in the air. And then Ern says, it's supposed to rain today. And then you hear the sound and they try to dismantle that mashup tent. He says, leave it behind because he's rich, rich. They pack up the car and then you hear Shadi again. Your love is stronger than pride, which of course is fitting for what it is. He really did have to swallow his pride and it was no perfect place better than that to be able to share in that space in that intimacy, that type of vulnerability and get the desired result. And even if he didn't, it was still a beautiful moment, but it's just a cherry on top and seeing Lottie not stare at her iPad, but stare at her parents shows how intuitive she is. It reminds me of the line he said that Lottie is the best of both of them. I think a lot of parents feel that way. I don't have a kid yet, so I don't know, but a lot of parents have said that. And I think there's a beauty in that, knowing that Lottie is this perceptive person because of her parents. And maybe there's a chance for them to have an actual family. Snipe Hunt really signified to me the elusiveness of love itself, especially in the black community. If we look at it, especially going back to the scene where they had the picnic and that structure, which embodies slavery, the past meeting the present, choosing different, not just because of what the foundations of history have set for you or what your family has done before, but deciding different because that's what you want. Not forcing things, but allowing things to evolve effortlessly with ease naturally to what it should be. 
and letting that be what it is in its essence in the moment. There's so much I could say and get into, but I'm sure you guys read the same. And if you've read anything else that you want to add, leave it for the community down below. Hit the like to let the algorithm know that you like these kind of episodes and help the channel grow by subscribing too. I'm trying to think off the top anything else I'd add to this, but Snipe Hunt was amazing on so many levels. It definitely was unexpected, but in a good kind of way. And I think it wraps up this plot line well enough for us to appreciate whatever the next two or three episodes have to say before it's all done. What if we get a whole nother series called LA with the same characters? I'd be here for that. What if Al is going to LA too and Darius? I mean, he's a tag along, so that would be sick. But again, here I am going off the ledge and going too far with it. So let me just wrap it up here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, you know what to do. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.